fabulous. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining the Main Stage Music weekly live stream. Weekly. Yeah. This is Brad, and of course, as always, we've got Jamie right here. And what we're talking about today is something that if you're an acoustic guitar player, you've thought about, or you're still dealing with, you know, right now. And that is, how do you amplify your acoustic guitar? Acoustic guitar. Uh, you plug it into a wall socket. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so not obviously, a not a funny an acoustic joke. guitar, it's hilarious. It's not a funny One of the best it's dangerous I've ever heard. To the community, <laughs> please do not do that. So, mm -hmm. with an acoustic guitar, we spend so much time thinking about what guitar we like, what our tone is, and oftentimes we work on our craft at home, we pick out the guitar that suits our needs, we work these songs out, and then it's time to play, or time to record. Man, so, I didn't even realize how big a topic this could be. But it really I, but, is. But I'll keep. We'll, we'll try and keep it just in the little box for now. No, it's it's a big deal. And and you know this is the stuff that we. By the way, we want your comments. I know that you guys are waiting with bated breath to hear the wisdom of us two forty-something-year-old <laughs> dudes who've been doing this our whole lives oh, on a Tuesday night. Yes, all the best wisdom comes on Tuesdays. <laughs> but we really we're kind of like. Um, the Socratic method of learning here. Is that right? Yeah, so with enough questions and input, the correct solution presents itself. See, that's how this works. You're learning some more, aren't you? Assume assume most of what is, is being said is not the case and uh, question <laughs> it strongly. And we will do our best to like be of integrity and correct so ourselves where <laughs> we're, we're, we're practical. I only correct myself when I need to be corrected. Hmm. Now, that being said, um, so getting back to what we were talking about. So when you've got, uh, you've worked on your craft, you've perfected your guitar, mm -hmm. tone, your feel, your sound. Like, this is my... Your art, This man. is my thing, your my craft. Your identity. So where do you go next? Well, you have to get that sound to the masses, whether that's live, mm -hmm. whether that's in a recording thing, or even like what we're doing here, a live... Um, stream, okay, we're it's TV, right? We're on TV. Um, so that being said, what are your options? Well, you know, I was thinking about this today because um, we sell at Main Stage Music a lot of acoustic guitars. Um, I'm going to argue we sell the best acoustic guitars. I mean, we sell Martin, obviously, for all of our fans, you know that. Uh, we're also a Gibson acoustic dealer, and we also sell amazing guitars like by Cole Clark, by Breedlove and Yamaha, Ibanez, all sorts of wonderful things. So people can be very opinionated about the tone that they're getting and so on. Now, that being said, the number one, our best selling and really our favorite pickup system, okay, so a pickup is the first thing we're going to talk about, is made by uh, LR Bags. And uh, LR Bags is a California company. They've been around since the 1970s. You know, the 1970s were a pretty cool time. I know they get a lot of uh, bad rap because a lot of the products made in the 70s are, let's say, by historical standards, not revered. Okay? I, I, I was I listened to, a, uh, I don't know if it's a new video out there or not, but I was listening to Hampton Grease Band today from you know, segueing late seventies, early eighties and that friggin' cat man, Colonel Bruce. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's uh I mean there was a lot of psychedelic, very Oh, I mean there, it doesn't mean there's bad st only bad stuff. I mean that's not the case at all, but yeah. but from like a gear standpoint, with the exception of like the Fender Rhodes, uh the effects pedal industry, maybe amplifiers, everything else meh. You know, isn't exactly the most revered aspect. So, but that being said, one thing that did really thrive in the 1970s is pickup technology. Mm. Okay. So, out of the 70s, you had the Seymour Duncan, DiMarzio, and of course, LR Bags, um, as well as Fishman and some other brands as well. So, LR Bags um, is a guy's name, by the way, Lloyd Bags. And uh, they make very good quality, primarily acoustic guitar 
uh, pickups. Now, you might say, okay, you're already getting, what's a pickup? Well, a pickup is exactly what it sounds like. It picks up the sound of your instrument and turns it into an electronic signal that then you can use through a, a sound system or in your recording setup. But you may not know that there's a lot of different types of pickup. I guess, uh, was pickup like 50s? Like Wes, like sticking a coil well, under the strings? You know, that's, it's an interesting that? question. I mean, the very, if you want to get into uh, the history of pickups, yeah. uh, really, I guess it would go back to the 1930s. Yeah, I was just trying to get the language. Yeah, so like the early, Rickenbacker. Early lap steels, yeah. yeah, the Rickenbacker. Yeah. Um, I guess the frying pan. They, it was the very first electric guitar. Um, it what the way it picked up the sound was through a magnetic field. So you would use uh, strings that had magnetic um, materials in them, and this magnet with copper wire would pick up that magnetic field and send it out to be amplified. Um, but now with acoustic guitar pickups, it's slightly different. So um, there are two basic types of acoustic guitar pickups. Well, you know what? Three basic types. Let me, let me take that back a notch. The very first ones that were released in the 1950s uh, by brands like D. Armand mm -hmm. were the traditional, uh, I guess what you'd call magnetic pickups. So they were um, either installed or um, maybe sandwiched in the sound hole of your acoustic guitar, and they would pick up the magnetic field that your strings were making, okay? Now, the reason that that is, um, I guess, important to say is strings are made from bronze, or they're wound with bronze, they're steel, but they're wound with bronze. They don't magnify, you know, um, the sound that you get from that magnetic force, you know, bronze isn't magnetic. So it, it's not um, going to give you the same sound as let's say a nickel string on top of a pickup. So when you think of like a Les Paul pickup or a Stratocaster pickup, it's not the same on an acoustic guitar. The sound is different. Now the next ones after that in the 1970s by companies like Barkus Berry were what they were called contact pickups or a transducer. The very first ones were just a little block that they would either glue to the underside of the bridge plate of your acoustic guitar or sometimes to the top, and it would pick up the vibration of that top and then plug it right into your amplifier. Then, kind of when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, um, that's when the under saddle pickup started kind of coming into play. Really, one of the first companies I saw do that was Ovation. You know, mm -hmm. Ovation um, actually de uh, developed one of the very first under saddle pickups, uh, which is still being used, by the way. It's, it was very advanced for the time. Uh, it was a parabolic pickup. So it had a, an individual sensor for each um, string. Mm -hmm. uh, it was brilliant. Uh, and that's why they still use it today. So, But it's a pressure plate. So imagine a little plate underneath the saddle. And when the strings are pushed down on it, it, it picks up that vibration and sends that out. So if you guys remembered uh, when we had Cole Clark on last week, um, or actually it was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, a little, little way <laughs> back. So the, he talks about, uh, and of course, let me also say the most, um, the oldest way of picking up your instrument is with a microphone. Okay. So you would put a microphone in front of something and, and you'd hear it. So the oldest way was probably uh, like a cow horn. <laughs> a cow horn, yeah, yeah, some big long tube, <laughs> or a ram's horn, like some a ram off the side a of a shofar, mountain. Shofar, you know, yeah, you could yell into it, and then you you had that one. Hezekiah, bring me the shofar for my lute, where I, I can play. I know. just tuned my new cat gut gourd <laughs> instrument, and I'm gonna go blong 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 all day long with I've it. I've got to track the Eloy to <laughs> be eaten. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so if you remember back to when we talked about with. Um, our friend Michael Adams with Cole Clark, what they did on their pickups was they said, let's use all of them. Yeah. They used a pressure plate in the under saddle pickup. They used a microphone and a transducer all in one thing. It, it's not been done. I mean, it's the only guitar that does that. But now LR Bags, and I know I'm kind of getting off, but it's a broad subject. Okay. LR Bags makes an entire selection of different pickups. And I brought with... Um, just some off the shelves, okay? 
I mean, all y'all who shop at Main Stage obviously already know that we carry all the good stuff. Um, but it's not just LR bags I brought. I also brought some Martin brand, which is made by Fishman, by the way, which is another big brand. But um, so as you can see here, they have like this is the the most popular. They just call it the Element, okay? And the Element is your transducer style, excuse me, your under saddle style pickup. So it just fits right underneath the saddle of your guitar, and it gives you a very bright and defined sound. And it's, it has little volume controls inside the sound hole. So if you want to bring the volume up or down, it's very easy to do. And just generally speaking, it sounds great. Yeah, I, I keep struggling because this topic could, I, 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 I know where you're headed, and it's, it's good. I think it's useful information. But man, I'm struggling with like wanting to like take it back to, you know, what is your sound and how to actually achieve your sound and like try to scale out the performance that you're at and look at the reliability versus cost. Look at the type of instrument, the type of stuff you're playing. And you know, I'll tell you it what, this get, is it where can get silly big. And you know what? Let's let it get big because here's what we need to have happen. Let's let it get big. Well, yeah. If you guys um, are watching, and I hope you are, okay. Um, you can comment and tell me what you think, okay? Because really, this show is about you. Obviously, it's main stage music trying to help connect with you guys. But it's about you connecting with what's important to, okay. you know, what you're doing, okay? So, like, if you've had um, experience with one or the other. Well, Bags is such a great example because they've got, they've maintained so many pick. I mean, Fishman, Fishman has their add-on microphones with mostly, like, pickup systems you know the prefix and the prefix yeah. plus blender and stuff then they got the magnetics and i've had some of those uh not dual source but what are they called a oh, rare earth yeah it's different lines of things that they do but um fish uh bags is such a good example because there's so many different variations and like even incorporating modeling and other digital tech which is cool it, because the variations tell you something it means that they care about all of what people are doing yeah there's a lot of applications they can go into yeah right? this isn't like it's just a hey that's good enough we're leaving it alone here's here's your yeah here's your rations pick oh up. you are an acoustic do, player do with Accept it your do with it as you will no i mean um so you know that being said um you know okay so the element here is probably the most popular just under saddle um pickup but like we had talked about like this one is made by a brand called K-N-A, okay, which, um, <laughs> you know, we've been a dealer for for a little while, and some people are like, K-N-A? It's made like in Romania or something, but they're, they're European-made. Romania? No, it, hey, the sound is great, but this is a sound hole pickup, and um, LR Bags also makes their version of a sound hole pickup they call the M1 Active. And oh, yeah, those are great. Yeah, they yeah, really have a nice full... Yeah, this one has the element with it. With the anthem, Mike. yeah. So that yeah. that's the next one I was kind of going to talk about. So this is Talk the um, this is kind of a combination. So they know a lot of people like the under saddle sound, okay, which is very bright and tangy, but then they want the the sweeter, fuller sound mm. of a microphone. Mm. But sweet, full, and tangy. But one thing you find is Keep that using food references for the well, it is dinner time, you know. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, the I beam. That's a good pickup. So um, with the Anthem, what you basically have is they combined a microphone and the um, under saddle pickup into one that you can blend. So if you want more under saddle, you can do that. If you want more microphone, you can do that. So, you know, LR Bags is listening to what you guys want and in trying to produce it. If that one's sweet and tangy, would the I beam system be uh meaty savory and you know, filling i'll tell you i've had a oh, by the way we love your comments we've got several people commenting already all right um first of all we have our buddy freddie fry all the way from brielle new jersey which is one of those beach towns where like rich people live uh, so he probably has one of all of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, Freddie Fry has got more money than he has since. That's all I can tell you. Every day he's texting me some amazing... Today he texted me a picture of not one, but two green Paul Reed Smith customs that he's got. 
like recently acquired? Just got. Oh yeah. Oh well. I mean, the guy is good, loaded. Good Absolutely for you. Good loaded. Good for you, Freddie. Hey, but, chop um, that baby up and put an I beam in the yeah. in the bridge. And man, but if you've had PRS sound combined with bags. But he was you making a comment on our 1970s post, and he said, "I'll take every 1970s Travis Bean you can throw at me." Mm. Yes, Travis Bean was one of those amazing things that came out of the 1970s, and uh, yeah, I would also take every Travis Bean you can send. Um, now we also have our friend Brian Osborne, who is a phenomenal player, contributes a lot in the community, musically speaking, and um, he said that. You know, when you have these uh, under saddle pickups, you have to really, you know, care about the material of the saddle, which is true. You know, because if you have micarta, if you have uh, plastic, everything if you have bone, affects everything. It really does. If and it's a pressure reason, plate, that's why you got seven boxes up exactly. Here, right? When you're talking about a pressure plate, if you have a very rigid surface, it will affect how that sound transfers to that. So that that's great. Um, so we definitely want to keep the. Um, uh, comments coming so feel free to you know we're all about interaction and so on um, but uh, and of course thank you Michael he, Michael says he prefers the I beam mm. um, and uh, now I'll tell you what's what I have to say about that I beam what's is, he ha- what does he have it in um, he says for the I- yeah Michael what you didn't tell what kind of guitar you had it in come on man it's probably a froggy bottom it probably is a froggy bottom Froggy Bottom is a guitar that I will own before I die. Charles, maybe. Charles Fox is one that I'll have before I die. I mean, killer. There's so many guitars, so little time. Um, but uh, the I Beam's interesting. So uh, the first time I ever heard about the I Beam, it was um, the band Nickel Creek. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And they're the other guy, not Chris Thiele. Sean? Sean, yeah. yeah. So uses, Watkins. yeah, Sean Watkins uses an I beam pickup, and so of course I had to get one, and I put it in, and let me tell you something, Sean, you're an amazing player. I love what you do, but we don't share the same opinion of pickups, because the I beam has a good sound, but it just wasn't for me. And see, that's why again, like we were talking about, you have all these different pickups because some are going to connect. And some just may not. Oh. Uh, the I beam, you would think it would be a real woody sound because the way this works, they call it an I beam because there's this little I beam shaped uh, transducer that sticks to the bridge plate, and it just picks up the vibration. Well, it's good marketing. I mean, it sounds girthy. Well, I just found that it didn't have the bottom end that I needed. Really? Yeah. And I what mean, guitar were you putting it? A uh, Larivee SD60. Okay. Um, which is a 12 so a 60, fret 60s custom wood, right? What, what was your um, It was a, uh, by the way, I love that guitar. It's a, a um, slope shouldered 12 fret dreadnought. So, I mean, it's a tank with mm-hmm. a one and seven eighths nut slotted headstock. It's a killer guitar. I mean, just a boomer. Michael Jones says he has an M20 PA bridge. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, Guild M20s are great guitars. Um, but, uh, so with but the I beam, it just didn't. Carry the no, it didn't carry the bottom end. And the reason I got hmm. that guitar, it's a huge guitar. If you know what an SD60 is, and it just was too sparkly. You needed an, a bags pair of DI. You know what I ended up getting? A cool. sound hole pickup. Oh. So, um, like the sound hole pickups we were talking about at the bottom here, um, they make the M1 Active, which is the most popular. Okay, this has been around for many moons. It is active, meaning it has a battery. Okay. Uh, which means it's very hot. Is that the white one? Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Tweedy has used these. That's the first guy I saw use one. Um, it has uh, movable pole pieces. It has a little volume control. Um, they sound amazing. But not to be outdone, what they came out with, the kind of Mark II, ah, that's not it, was the M80? Here it is. The M80. Now, for all of you juvenile delinquents like me, M80s were these things that you bought in Mississippi because they were illegal in every other state mm-hmm. um, that you could blow up toilets and lunch boxes and all sorts of cool stuff with. Yeah, mailboxes. Yeah. So, but the M80 is an M1 active with a body sensing tabs. Yeah. On the uh, this thing is awesome. I, so you know we know Galloway and then I yeah. play. I've had you know you gig magnetics, you gig the other. 
my observation has been single line stuff, magnetics. If you're doing strummy, strummy, body and piezo. Oh, yeah. That's just, that's the go-to. It's so, not always the case, but that's the go-to. And that's the, the case. You know, all this stuff we're talking about, this is opinion. We want. That's why we're talking about wanting your opinion. Because what works for one person's ear may not work for someone else's. Um, also, we've been getting some more uh, comments in. So what would you prefer on a national, a cone pickup? Well, thank you so much for the question. It's a great... Eesh. But let me tell you something. There are not a lot of choices. No. There are only a few choices when it comes to... Co and the way they um, use I, uh, Isolated pickup, room, large diaphragm microphone. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. But the way they do pickups on a cone, by the way, if you guys didn't know, is it is a transducer that's got a little disc on it. And the way a cone is attached, there's a little threaded screw. And so you basically screw it to that center point, and that's how it's vibrating. Mm. Um, it's irritating to install, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's functional. It does the job, but I, I have to agree. I don't know. I think any of them are fun to install. Well, okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we've talked about some of these different pickups, and, and obviously we're all going to have our opinions and so on and so forth. But sometimes you guys are like, well, you've talked about it. That doesn't help me know the difference between just an under saddle pickup or an under saddle, you know. Who said that? A lot of people say that stuff. Man, tell that cat. <laughs> or a microphone. Come on, come on down. You got so seven boxes. Let me on just go face. ahead and say a couple of things about the difference why we, you'd want an under saddle pickup versus a mic. And we were talking about this just before. Yeah. Okay. So I was playing a gig once, and if any of you guys have you ever seen one of our gigs, I was in a popular duo called The Dudes back in the day, all right? It was me and another guy. And I will never forget this gig. I was playing a Gretsch Rancher. And again, another thing, if you guys don't know this, I've got a pretty substantial collection of guitars. A Gretsch Rancher is a very odd acoustic guitar in that the old ones do not have a traditional saddle they are more made more like an arch top so it has a bridge yeah the bridge isn't glued to the sound exactly yeah. so it's like an arch top guitar so there's no bridge plate there's no under saddle to put a under saddle pickup so i decided to try a acoustic guitar microphone also made by lr bags called the lyric it's a wonderful sounding microphone but it's a little condenser mic that sticks inside the guitar and i played that guitar at that gig and I have to say that as a um, player, I was enjoying um, the strumming sound, but it was not cutting. In other words, as a singer and player, I was not getting that satisfying bite that we could use as cues going off of different um, songs and so on. So I remember the, the other guy in The Dudes had to stop and embarrass me and say, you know, you're a good guitar player, but that guitar s sounds like crap. I hate that guitar. Whereas everyone who was sitting in the audience that night, all they were saying is how much they loved the sound of that yeah. guitar. So sometimes what the audience hears and they like is different than what the performer wants to hear, okay? And traditionally, at least in my, you know, decades of experience a uh, performer is concerned more with getting his cues right the bite making sure that you hear the term cut through the mix you know terms like that which basically just means more me i want to hear very concise and um delicate but very uh enunciated Ar articulate sound. articulate's a good word yeah um, I want to hear me, and I want to know when I'm starting, when I'm stopping, uh, so on. And a microphone, you know, just was not giving that other yeah. guy that um, that. I tightness. wasn't there. I'm not going to judge. Uh, we'll we'll you take can your, judge. We'll take your word for That's it. That's what we do. So that being said, what we thought we'd do today is we brought with a, um, a beautiful guitar. This is a... Oh, it's all right. <laughs> This is a brand new Gibson Southern Jumbo. Look at that thing. And uh, and by the way, Main Stage Music is the only Gibson acoustic dealer in our area. So if you guys are so inclined. Now, with Gibson, they um, make sure that 
it's very well equipped. Okay, so this has a LR bags VTC element system in it. Yeah, so it has the volume and tone control. Yeah. That's what VTC stands for. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys what just the pickup sounds like or the guitar direct sounds like. And then we brought with us also a Shure SM81, which is a um, industry standard instrument for like acoustic guitar instrument microphone. Yeah, if the 57 goes on amps, 81 goes on. Yeah, they're incredible. And acoustics. So, um, oh, by the way, as far as comments, I, I don't want to get out of control here. So we have uh, Michael said that, uh, that he thinks the M1 Active is great for both personally. I run one through the radial JDI. Cool. Great choice. And it sounds great for finger picking, lead, and strumming. I completely agree. And again, with experience, yeah, that's an amazing setup, Michael. Well done. And of course, Freddie, not to be outdone, goes, why do you think so many pros use Takamini guitars? Uh, well, I mean, we're talking about pickups, but the reason they like Takamini guitars is two reasons, okay? Sure. The sure. same reason why um, people like Japanese cars, like Hondas and Infinities and so on, is because they're extremely well and consistently built. I mean, those things just don't go out of tune. They're they're great, okay? But also the preamp. Now again, we we can't confuse a pickup and a preamp, okay? The preamps are have always been above the fray as far as what they're doing, and uh, Takamini makes some very quality stuff. When I, by the way, when I'm saying Takamini, um, their top end stuff, stuff made in Japan, is really their flagship stuff, and that. It's hard to beat for a pro, um, a pro performance guitar. Now, I mean, acoustically, so in other words, without the preamp and pickup, they're heavily built. So they're, they're kind of heavy guitars and they don't ring and resonate as well as let's say a Martin or a Gibson might. So well, they're- Depending on style. Yeah, it depends on I style. Had a, I had a Japanese, a Koa New Yorker. Oh, cool. With a, with a nice. So, well, people well. who watch me know that I gig with a Takamini, guitar, okay? Man. And I'm not going to say that I use my Takamini to write and inspire it just wasn't acoustically. It was guitar. <laughs> but, I mean, when you um, play them live, they are just rock-solid, extremely well-made guitars. But it just acoustically, they're a little underwhelming, I don't mind saying. But plugged in, they're pretty impressive. So, I mean, that's why pros like them. Um, so, anyways, mm. what we're doing is uh, we've got... Jamie plugged in direct yep. so you'll just hear the acoustic pickup and then we're going to mute that channel and just uh, let you hear the microphone and then just to be cheeky we're going to have them both on at the same time so that you can hear kind of east meets west you know you'll hear how awesome your guitar could sound if you wanted to get really um, silly and, and actually buy an amazing microphone along with an amazing pickup. Yeah. So let's start just with the guitar direct. So now what I'm hearing is a very tight, very articulate sound, um, almost snappy, I mean, definitely snappy. Now I have to say that having heard that guitar just sitting in the room, yeah. that pickup does not sound like that guitar. No, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, now it's very tight and punchy, which you could imagine if you were playing live, man, how refreshing it is to know that you're hearing when your pick hits the strings, you're hearing it, okay? But this is a $3,000 guitar. So however satisfying it is to know <laughs> that you got really punchy response, it's kind of irritating listening to this, which you guys are probably doing on your phones or uh, your laptop or whatever. Um, 
This is not what a Gibson Southern Jumbo sounds like. No, I mean, with a pickup, you don't get the Martin Air, and with a with a pickup, you don't necessarily get the Gibson Squash. Yeah. Right. And Gibsons have such a warm mid-range yeah. tone; yeah. they're incredible. So now let's mute the guitar direct, and let's turn on the guitar mic. So now this sound is the Shure SM81. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I like it. But you know, one thing I'm noticing mm -hmm. is it doesn't have the attack that the previous sound had. So like mm -hmm. when you hit the strings, you didn't have that immediate satisfaction of, yeah, of it hearing definitely, that. It definitely feels different under the fingers. Yeah. yeah. Um, additionally, um, one thing to, to note, uh, a lot of our viewers, okay, as well as Jamie as, and myself, have played live. Well, what happens if you take a microphone and stick it in front of a monitor? You know, you're gonna get squeal, you're gonna get feedback. If you're in a small room, if there's other players, if you have a drummer, a uh, bass player, if you have a microphone sitting there, it's going to pick everybody up. Yeah, so he heavily space dependent. They're, they're a room this big would likely be almost at the limit. You know, you have to be real careful with it. You got to um, be real out, careful outside with outside it. Outside here, you'd be, you'd be fine. There's yeah. A number of people. But then the problem with outside is you get... That's what that little foam cap's for. Yeah, there's a foam cap on it, and you guys could hear me <laughs> blowing into that thing. Every time that the wind blows, every time that a car parks nearby, you're going to hear everything. So the problems that a mic has is the, the pros, holy smokes, it sounds amazing. Now you're hearing the fullness and the depth of that incredible acoustic guitar. But you don't have the articulation, and in a let's say a louder setting, you're going to pick up um, noise that is unintended. Let's mm. just use the word unintended. Sure. Um, so now I want you to guys to... I was going uh, to joke again that like the bags came with the railroad passing oh, yeah. function. In it. See, but, now I think we need to get a sponsorship funny. from Norfolk Southern because, sure. yeah, every single episode you guys have heard the, the train go by. Reliability. Um, Norfolk will get your package there. So now... Um, what we're going to have the last uh, sample, we're going to turn both the microphone and the direct guitar direct on, okay? And I want you guys to listen now to a, a pickup and a mic coming together, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I think hands down, that is one of the sweetest sounds that you can hear for an acoustic guitar. Now, so I mean, it is a pretty good one, though. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good one. I mean, if you because again, you guys spend so much. I mean, it, as a guitar players, we're constantly caring about our craft. We're looking at the next guitar. You know, I mean, my friend Derek Malone said, "You know what the perfect number of guitars is?" Plus one. Yeah, just one more. Plus one. I mean, the point is, is that each guitar is a tool. You, you figure out what it does for you and so on. But now you want to share that, our craft. We're working so hard on it. We're sharing it with others. But to properly share what we're hearing and feeling, you need the right equipment to do that. And I'll tell you what, having a pickup like an LR Bags Element, which is what this uh, SJ has, mm. and then a quality mic like this Shure SM81, Man, that is. But again, just so you guys know, with uh, we're in a fairly controlled area here, 
So there's no drummer, there's no audience singing and clap. What's that man's PayPal address for the tip jar? Oh, man, Rich Freddy Fry. <laughs> I accept uh, Bitcoin yeah, and exact- green PRS customers. Yeah, exactly. He he only takes payment in green PRS Ship those customers. those to Maine State <laughs> Music yeah. in Dayton, Tennessee. We're working something hey, out. Freddy? We're working something I'll out. I'll pick you a tune any time. Absolutely. Um. But uh, really, the ideal situation is having both a microphone and a pickup. Because I don't mind saying I was enjoying um, a live stream that I recently watched with my friend Emerald Butler. If you haven't seen Emerald, she is a phenomenal uh, singer-songwriter in the Chattanooga area. plays violin. And she plays a J45 Gibson that she bought from Main Stage Music. There you go. Where else are you going to get a Gibson, right? Um but in the live stream, they just had her running direct. And I felt bad because her guitar tone wasn't what it could be. And really, if they would have had a microphone in front of it, oh, man, it would have been second to none. It was incredible. Mm. And um, so as it demonstrated here, and I think it's fairly obvious when you guys heard the differences, that um, the pickup is definitely gives you that concise articulation that you want, but it's a little one-sided if it's just a pickup. The microphone gives you that big, swollen, open-air sound, but you don't have the articulation. Mm. But bringing them together really is what connects it. So, um, And I know that not all venues can do that. We could discuss an entire... You spend an entire uh, episode talking just about preamps, Okay. I am not doing that now because we could literally talk about, and we'll do another show about preamps. And again, what a preamp is, is what you plug your signal into to sculpt your tone to create the sound that you want. But um, honestly, uh, what we have here is from, from LR Bags and our friends at uh, Fishman and uh, even our European friends here with KNA and well, with Sure. Well, you got another 81 in the shop too, don't you? Oh, yeah. SM81. Every every growing boy needs one, you know. <laughs> yeah, you need uh, two. They come yeah. in matched pairs. Um, but I'll tell you, it's like uh, we did a live stream here with um, Rick Rushing. If you guys are familiar with Rick, he's a phenomenal um, blues musician here in our area. Um, I use a small see a SM eighty one. It's called a small diaphragm condenser. We used a small diaphragm condenser, albeit it wasn't SM eighty one. But people were like, "Man, Rick, you sound great." Because Rick live was always just plugging his guitar in. Yeah. And now on the live stream, they heard his guitar mic'd and his voice mic'd. And they're like, wow, you sound so good. And um, so, again, just know that if you're a performer, you your audience is listening. Okay. And how you present your product and your vision and your thoughts and your craft. Okay. Is being taken note of. And if you don't take note of these differences... You can always monitor the pickup and send the mic out front with the pickup and help out with feedback and get make sure the crowd's getting the sound that they want. See, now what he's talking about there is another episode entirely. <laughs> he's talking about routing, okay? Um, but, uh, no, seriously, what we're trying to do here at Main Stage is we want to obviously sh- connect with our customers, show them that there's a wide world and of opinions and so on, but... Uh, but also show them that there are products that can connect with what your craft is doing. Um, we are a dealer for LR bags, obviously Shure microphones, Gibson guitars, and so on. But um, all of this stuff matters, okay? And it can really help you connect with the people that you are playing for, even if it's just yourself. Um, because if you're not inspired, you're not going to be inspired to continue to grow as far as a player and, and an artist. I'm inspired to finish the show and keep playing this guitar some. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's, it's a very cool guitar. And I'll tell you with, um, and I have to apologize. I know so many of you guys are like, you know, I still love coming into main stage, but your inventory, man, it's a little low. And because people are, you know, if you live in Dayton, you know, the busy metropolis of 6,000 people, um, you guys are spoiled rotten. You do know that, right? Because, you know, Jamie lives in Chattanooga, and there's no store in Chattanooga he can walk into and see 50 Martins hanging on the wall or 20 Gibsons hanging on the wall. Uh, but Main Stage is 
is one of those places that people come from all over the area to see. But right now, we've got about half of that hanging because of this shortage that's going on. Just know that it is not by our choice, okay? We are doing everything we can to keep the best selection of Martins and Gibsons and LR bags and so on in stock. And everything is, we got stuff coming in daily. So don't hesitate, don't say, oh, it's a little bit low. Dude, there's always cool stuff rolling in. So don't, uh, don't let that discourage you. But again, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us again. And uh, we got some great shows coming up for you in the coming weeks. So make maybe. sure. What? Yeah. Maybe I'll sabotage them. And also, you know, this is another, this is episode two now where we're simulcasting. Man, you are so fancy. So we are on both YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. So if you're watching this on Facebook, go over to YouTube and click subscribe to the main stage music page. And uh, if you're on watching this on YouTube, scroll on over to you, uh, Facebook and uh, and like Main Stage Music. And but either way, uh, sh- if s- suggest it to your friends. Yeah. The and more, the merrier. For every million dollars of ad revenue generated <laughs> on YouTube, we will give out one free pack of strings to a lucky customer oh. on this very program. Free. I'm going to do you one better than that. Let oh. me just let me say it this way. Um, we have got so many cool items on our website, mainstagemusic.com, okay? Uh, one of which being a whole new shipment of apparel, hats, shirts, things like that. Yep. So what we are going to do is next week, we are going to give away. Yeah, man. A, time. Absolutely. We are giving away yeah. a brand new Mainstage Music t-shirt, and you can choose which one you want. We're not just going to like give you the one that sells the least. Okay, no, we're going to give you any which one you want, any size, any color That's that cool. we have available, you know. Um, and we're going to do it by random, okay? But you have to watch the show and participate. Otherwise, how do we know, right? So the more the merrier. Um, we definitely want you to subscribe, check in, so on. But we are definitely giving one away. And uh, so definitely tune in. Now, whether that's on YouTube or Facebook, we'll, we'll whatever. A, we'll ask Zuckerberg whether or not you shared with joy in your heart. And, and you know what? It better not be Mark Zuckerberg because as much money as that guy has, he can buy the shirt, you know? Um, this is supposed to be for you guys. So, But again, hey, thank you guys. Um, and no, Freddie Freddie just commented, do you have a size 4X? Let me tell you something, Freddie. I know you better than that. You're not a 4X. We will sew you one on the front of a 4X hand. I mean, this pandemic has been rough, uh, but not that rough. I know well, that's that why you I needed two green customs. He's stacking them on top of each other. Oh, yeah. He needs to, to play twice as many cool guitars yeah, to get the same it's, effect. It's easier than a double neck. Yeah, I mean, if, Les- if uh, what was it, Leslie West could play a junior, that guy was every bit of uh, t- big dude. It's a, that's why they call him Mountain. I mean, right? They're not gonna. He wasn't called Hill, you know. <laughs> he wasn't called the Plains, you know. I mean, <laughs> uh, it was Leslie West. I mean, it's a mountain. So, um, but again, so definitely check in. We're giving away a T-shirt next weekend, um, or next week. It's Tuesday. Man, I work too much. But again, thank you so much for watching, and, uh, and like and share and blah 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 blah. See you guys next week. <laughs>